You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. So one of the talking points that we've had um, really ever since LSU wrapped up its regular season was that uh, numbers for uh, this bowl game were going to be tough for LSU. And when you just look at the fact that LSU already started this season a little short on numbers uh, coming off of the COVID year, when uh, you factor in all the injuries that LSU had, there were going to be bowl opt-outs and then... Uh, on top of that, uh, I'm still saying there's going to be uh, academic casualties for this team just because there are every single year uh, without fail. Um, we've now learned another player is uh, is not going to be available for LSU in the bowl game, and that is uh, Neil Farrell. The senior defensive lineman uh, put it up on Twitter and has confirmed to uh, 247 Sports and others and, uh, and via Twitter, via himself, that um, he will not play in the bowl game. Uh, he tweeted, I appreciate the love and support. I will not be playing in the bowl game. Uh, I've decided it's best that I start my pre-draft process. Much love to the university relationships I've built forever LSU. So Neil Farrell has made it official that he will not uh, play in the Texas Bowl for LSU. So down another starter, another really impactful player uh, for this bowl game for, um, for LSU. And... Uh, there's a couple of ways to to address this, and I'll I'll start first of all just by complimenting Neil Farrell uh, before I talk about what it means for the bowl. Um, Farrell's a guy who showed up as a three star out of Mobile when they signed him. It was a big deal to go into Mobile and and get that player. Um, yeah, you know, he was albeit a, you know, a three star and the number twenty five defensive lineman in the country. Still to go out of state and to get a player like Neil Farrell was was nice, a big deal. And he continued getting better each of his years in Baton Rouge. In 2018, he played in 10 games, didn't start as a freshman. 2019 on the championship team, played in 15 games and was actually LSU's most productive interior lineman. Only started three times, but he had 46 tackles and seven tackles for loss, added three sacks and four quarterback hurries. He was a very productive player in 2019. Now, 2020, remember, he opted out initially because of COVID. His grandmother was very sick. As she started to heal, he made the decision to return. It took him a little while to get back in shape, and it was pretty evident early in 2020 that Farrell was, was carrying some extra weight, wasn't maybe in the best shape, but still... Played in all 10 games, started six, had just 25 tackles. Really, his production was cut in half from 2019 to 2020, albeit again in five fewer games. But then in 2021, you know, Neil Farrell made the decision to come back for a senior year. And in an era of guys that, that leave early and choose to pursue the NFL and pursue a pro career to each their own, uh, he decided, like many guys did, like Austin Deculus, like Ed Ingram, um, like Glenn Logan, to run it back one more time, to play another season in Baton Rouge. And as a result, he saw his production increase dramatically. He had his best season. I mean, Neil Farrell had 45 tackles this year, nine and a half tackles for loss. Keep in mind, he had seven tackles for loss in, in 15 games in the championship season. They played 12 games this year. It's three fewer than what they played in 2019. He's got nine and a half tackles for loss, Two sacks, two pass breakups. He's been a mightily productive interior player for LSU this season and has dramatically increased his draft stock as a result of coming back. Now, the key point here to remember is it may not be enough to really financially make a big difference. Here's what I mean. Last year, Jabril Cox was a fourth-round pick. Jabril Cox, as a fourth-round pick, signed a four-year, $4.251 million contract. Four-year, $4.2 million as a fourth-round pick. Kerry Vincent was a seventh-round pick, and he signed a four-year, $3.583 million contract. So really, the difference between Jabril Cox as a fourth-rounder and Kerry Vincent as a seventh-rounder was about 700 k over four years. 
it's negligible, especially when you figure in taxes and all, agent fees and all sorts of stuff. There really isn't much difference between being a seventh rounder and a fourth rounder, except that if a team invests a higher draft pick in you, they're more likely to keep you around longer. Make sense? If you're a third, fourth round pick, that team has invested that asset in you, and so you are more likely to make that team. You are more likely to stick around. You're going to get more chances as opposed to a seventh round pick or an undrafted free agent. That's maybe the benefit for a guy like Neil Farrell coming back, increasing his draft stock. He may not get it on the front end as far as being a high draft pick or anything like that, but it may be a guy that's able to stick around to his second contract and make that money because of where he was selected in the draft. Big salute to Neil Farrell, who, who came back, had a really solid senior year on a team that wasn't great, obviously, but did plenty for himself. Now he's going to go off. He's going to play in the East-West Shrine game, uh, and he's decided he's going to opt out to prepare for, for the draft. Look, you know Ed Ogeron, former LSU coach Ed Ogeron, this is what he said about Neil Farrell over the summer. I'm so proud of Neil Farrell. I saw him down the hallway yesterday. I found out he just graduated from LSU. And I'm so happy for him and his mom and daddy. He's a great young man, came back. Uh, you know, Neil makes a lot of plays. If you look at the stats last year, he's one of our most active defensive linemen. He came back, uh, got in great shape. I think he's going to have a phenomenal year for us. And he did. Uh, Neil Farrell did. And you know, he even tweeted a bit ago, uh, a couple days ago, that he's the best interior lineman. He said he's the best nose tackle in the country. The eye in the sky don't lie. Quote tweeted a, a video from a Shane Coughlin who was um, had some clips of Neil Farrell playing this past season. So I think Neil Farrell did a lot for himself coming back, but he's not going to play in the bowl game. Now, the flip side of that, which we discussed, is that LSU is going to be really thin on numbers. Keep in mind, like we've talked about, they were already thin on numbers. Then you've had the injuries throughout the season. You're going to have bowl opt-outs. Farrell's one that you know about. You have transfers, like we've already seen with Max Johnson transferring out and Elias Ricks transferring out. Yeah, Trey Palmer has announced his transfer. And between now and the bowl game, you're going to learn about players being academically ineligible. It happens every single year, and this is going to be no exception. And I to understand that it might be a little more, more numbers than, than we normally hear. And I think that's a reflection on on Ed Ogeron, obviously, and the culture that was built or not built within uh, the LSU football program this past fall. But I mean, just look down the list. I mean, John Emery, Kayshawn Butte, Deion Smith, Coy Moore, Max Johnson, Trey Palmer, Miles Brennan, we know is not going to play. Stingley, Ricks, Gay, Anthony Burns, Farrell, Evan Small. I mean, you're going to be very, very light on numbers in this bowl game. How many guys they actually run out there against Kansas State on, on January the 4th? I'm... <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but that number uh, keeps shrinking by the day. And you know, I shared with you last week, you know, as they began practice, as LSU began you know, their first workouts for this bowl game under under new head coach, uh, interim head coach Brad Davis, I should say, you know, they're, they're running right now a walk-on uh, Lloyd Cole at first-team cornerback. I mean... It's a far cry when you start the season with Stingley and Ricks. And now you're going into bowl preparation and a walk-on. I'll be the senior from Parkway, Lloyd Cole, but he's the guy out there running at one of your first-team slots, uh, your first-team spots at corner there with, you know, McLaughlin. So, I mean, that means what's up with Radarius Jones? What's up with Cordell Flott? What's, I mean, you can go to what's up with Darren Evans. You can go down the list of, of defensive backs and say, where are these guys? Who's not available? Well, if, you know, We'll start to get those answers as we get closer to the bowl game. But uh, you're down one more that you know now with, uh, with Neil Farrell, who's opted out of the bowl game. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.